Hey y'all, it's Chris. Today we're gonna do a deep dive on a super unique and very flavorful ingredient, falernum. A lot of you tropical cocktail fans are already gonna know and love falernum, but I guarantee you, you're gonna learn something new from this video. So what is falernum? Falernum is a general term for a sweet, citrusy, spiced, rum-based liqueur. Same as in a lot of classics, including Don the Beachcomber's original Zombie. Beyond the classics, there are countless riffs on daiquiris, swizzles, Mai Tais, all of which use falernum with stellar results. Later in the video, we're gonna shake up two of our favorite falernum cocktails, the Saturn and the Corn and Oil. So today, we're gonna start with a tried and true classic, the OG, John D. Taylor's Velvet Falernum. Sidebar, there are some products out there that call themselves Falernum that don't have alcohol in them. We're gonna keep everything apples to apples and only look at products that do have booze in them. Since it first landed on US shores in the 1930s, this lovely bottle right here, John D. Taylor's Falernum has pretty much dominated the market. Today, our friends at House All Pins import this product and you have them to thank for its ubiquity in the US market. You should have no problem finding this bottle in liquor stores across the country big or small. First up, a little background on Falernum. As with so much in the cocktail world, the origin and history of Falernum is not particularly well documented. Let's start with the name, Falernum. Kind of a funny word, and nobody really knows where it came from. What we do know is that Falernum was a Latin word for Roman wine, and allegedly it was the most expensive and desirable of the wines. Of the wines? Of the wines? Of Roman wine? Most likely the name Falernum comes from Barbados in the 19th century. But again, it's murky. I'm not sure we're ever really sleuth out the deets on that one. Not unlike the name, the original recipes for the product Falernum is pretty obscure and most likely it just bounced around from person to person. The Falernum we know and love today was first developed and then commercialized by John D. Taylor in around 1890 in Bridgetown, Barbados. Like many famous recipes, his was an adaptation of many different recipes that had come before. So Velvet Falernum, it starts with a base of rum, it's sweetened with cane sugar, and it's infused with botanicals, most notably almond, lime, and clove. The exact recipe here is, of course, a secret, but the end result is a syrupy, candied citrus flavor, sort of a very light almond note, and then kind of a pronounced baking spice warmth on the finish. So Falernum came... So Falernum became popular in the 1930s, pretty much at the exact same time that Don the Beachcomber's Tiki Cray started hitting the golden, glamorous clubs of Hollywood. Since then, it's appeared in a plethora of cocktails and it's become a true staple ingredient for tropical cocktails of all kinds. As a category defining product, you should know that John D. Taylor's Velvet Falernum is still bottled to this day in Barbados. It's a pretty cool history. Okay, let's get to drinking. You're not gonna show this, are you? Super mild, really easy. A ton of cane sugar. The botanicals on this are definitely there. You get lime. The lime is pretty sharp. Definitely doesn't have like a citric acid twang to it. For me, the most dominant flavor is actually like sugar cane here. So kind of just uh, very syrupy. I feel like that's the hallmark of John D. Taylor's Velvet Falernum is lightly spiced and like overall pretty mild. And it's actually kind of hard to tell it's alcoholic at all. It's uh, only 11%. Speaking of that low ABV, we did confirm with the manufacturer it, it shouldn't spoil two to three years left out ambiently, and then if you throw it in the fridge, it should be totally indefinite. The low proof here also lends this product to kind of one-to-one -one or pretty close to one-to-one -one syrup replacement. You could really see yourself doing like a, a rum old fashioned here where like a half an ounce of this plus your favorite age rum. Another great point about John D. Taylor's product is it is extremely affordable, I think, in Texas, we're paying about 16 or 18 bucks at our local big box store for a 750 mil. Pretty hard to say no to that price point. All right, let's move on to one of our new players. First up, Brovo Spirits has their Lucky Falernum. They're out of Washington State. Quick hitters about this Brovo Spirits product, Lucky Falernum. It's the highest proof of all the Falernums we're gonna taste today. It's 35% ABV, so remember, 11% to 35 triple the alcohol by volume, should help it pack a punch. Color-wise, there's a lot more going on here, um, kind of a golden hue. So in the glass, a little more syrupy, seems to have more weight compared to the Velvet Falernum. That punches. Tropical fruit, a ton of spice. Citrus for sure, but like not lime dominant in the way this is. This is actually, I'm getting more 
more orange, not like a bitterness, but like a, a true, like juicy orange. It's perfumey. So I think that extra ABV really like makes it expand in your mouth, kind of brings all those botanicals out in a more uh, exciting and frequently like flavorful way. This is a very punchy product. It seems like it's gonna work really well in, in tiki cocktails. So we love the fact that Brovo Spirits gives us a ton of details about how this is made and what it's made from. So from their website, we learned this is actually a blend of neutral grain spirits and three-year-old rum. They split it out into kind of two separate processes running in parallel. So in one process tank, they infuse lime, orange, and pineapple. And in that other blend stage, they're going for all their spices. They say cinnamon, ginger, star anise, quite a few other ones in there that they're probably not gonna tell you about, but they're basically bifurcating like the fruit citrus quotient over here and then the spice quotient. So they're doing those separately and then they're gonna marry those back to make sure they're getting the proper ratio of spice and citrus. So cost-wise, you might have guessed as a craft producer, it is a little more expensive than our you know, $18 Velvet Flurnum. This is gonna set you back probably around 40 bucks. We couldn't find it locally here in Texas and we're a pretty big market, so there's a good chance you may have to have this shipped to you, but it is quite delicious. Next up is California Falernum by Jaeger Spirits. So this is another higher proof Falernum. This one's clocking in about 30% ABV. It claims that it has a rum base that is Jamaican style. Not a lot of details there, but I do like the sound of that because I'm a fan of Jamaican rum in general. From their unique rum base, they give a little bit of detail about what actually goes in here in terms of flavor. There's some typical stuff, you know, clove, almond, lime peel, but what's unique about this is it includes lime juice, apparently, and cocoa nibs. So those are two pretty unique ingredients for a falernum that, off the top, seem pretty complimentary. Complimentary. Chest over. Uh. No, 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 fuck. So this product has been entered into and won many gold medals at spirits tasting competition. So kind of has a great reputation. I should also mention the Brovo Lucky Falernum is a 90 point winner for the Beverage Tasting Institute. So these new guys, they got some chops behind them. Okay, whoa, this kind of evolves. So on the nose, cardamom, like cardamom is very aromatic spice but the actual flavor bomb for me here, funky rum esters plus a ton of ginger. It doesn't have a lot of uh, acidity. It's actually pretty kind of flat across like the tongue. Very different from both the Velvet Falernum and the very spice heavy Lucky Falernum. This one has almost sort of like a, a higher pitch to it almost in terms of its flavor. It doesn't have a lot of super deep spice notes. You should also know this is a higher price point, close to 40 bucks. And again, pretty limited distribution. You might have to have it shipped to you. Okay, last but not least, we're gonna jump across the pond. We're leaving American Craft Spirits. We're going to Germany. Golden Falernum from our friends at Bitter Truth. We're big fans of this brand. We have a ton of their bitters here on the bar. So whereas our two American Craft Spirits brand were pretty high proof, this one's only clocking in at about 18%. So back more in the low ABV territory. Bitter Truth doesn't give us a lot of info about how this is made. They say it's traditionally made. They mention lime, they mention clove, they mentioned almond, sort of the hallmarks of falernum. The one unique botanical that they expressly mentioned is vanilla. So didn't exactly get a vanilla note from any of these other ones. More middle of the road, not as orthogonal as these. This is much more round, much more similar palette, I think, to the Velvet Falernum, although overall a higher volume of flavor. Definitely getting the vanilla. It's almost more of a French vanilla as opposed to like a bourbon Madagascar style. Almost kind of has that like cream flavor to it, which I'm not like a huge fan of, but I know a lot of people do like. So where the dominant citrus on most of these other ones is lime, getting, getting more of sort of a sour or bitter orange here. Definitely some allspice, not as much straightforward clove. So I'm not sure how, how well this one's gonna punch through in a, in a cocktail. I think it's maybe more like the Velvet Falernum in, in terms of having sort of a lower overall flavor punch. So cost-wise, this is about 30, 35 bucks here in the US. It's not particularly easier to find than either of these, but in the European Union, you're gonna have better success since this is a German product. All right, y'all, let's put these things to the test. First up, we're gonna make the corn and oil cocktail. To start, three dashes of aromatic bitters. 
half an ounce of falernum, a half an ounce of lime juice, and finally add two ounces of dark aged rum. Give that a stir and garnish with a lime peel. We've got our four different corn and oil cocktails with each falernum. We're gonna start in the same order we tasted through earlier with the velvet falernum. So this is like probably the corn and oil you'd get if you randomly ordered it because this is the most popular product. It's very mild, rum forward, lime and Angostura kind of is, is dominant. There is some sugar from the from the falernum. It's the only input of sugar. Ultimately, it's it's pretty boozy and it's pretty tart. There's not a lot of like interesting character happening here in terms of like spice or uh, any other type of botanicals. Middle of the road, no surprises. Second, we're gonna jump back over to Lucky Falernum. If you remember, this one is like pretty spice forward, had a much higher ABV, ton more allspice, reads drier, doesn't have the syrupy kind of mouthfeel, a much more cinching, a dry, almost like pucker effect on the back end here. I think just the higher proof on the falernum and the lower sugar content. That is very spicy. Ginger and clove kind of kind of pushing through here. Lacks a little bit of of roundness and, and kind of smoothness. It's a little bit angular, although very flavorful. So the California falernum was kind of a ginger bomb for me. Very delicious, very unique. Let's see if that carries through in the corn and oil. One of the ingredients they said that they use is lime peel, which is normal, but also lime juice. It does have like a little bit of an extra juicy lime character, but the ginger is still dominant here. Sugar wise, I feel like it, it's kind of in between the Velvet Falernum and the Lucky Falernum, but really balanced, despite how maybe angular the product is by itself. I think it works really well here in the corn and oil. Finally, let's try Bitter Truth's Golden Falernum. Again, much more mild than these two. Not a lot of complexity going on in there for me. I'm getting mostly just like a candied baking spice, but not, not very high level. It's all like a little bit muted. Not bad, but also like not particularly interesting. Not as interesting as these two for sure. So I think my favorite right now is gonna be the California Falernum. It just works really well. The, the ginger punch with the aged rum and the Angostura. It's spicy, but kind of balanced and around. Third for me, I'm actually gonna go back with the OG here, I think. The uh, Velvet Falernum, while it doesn't do any one thing like spectacularly, it's a very round, easy to work with product and, and maybe it's just a little bit of status quo bias. I'm just kind of used to this flavor. Number three for me is actually gonna be, I'm gonna say the bitter truth for a similar reason. Um, it feels a little more round and, and more mellow, which is what I'm looking for in this cocktail. And therefore, although I love the product per se um, on its own really like a lot, I think the Lucky Falernum is a little too angular and maybe a little too sort of stringent in this application. I think there needs to be a little more sugar, a little more of a roundness to this cocktail that it's not quite bringing to the table here in the corner oil. For this second cocktail, we're gonna make the classic Saturn. To start, into your shaker, add a quarter ounce of almond orgeat syrup, half an ounce of passion fruit syrup, a quarter ounce of falernum, three quarters ounce of fresh lemon juice, two ounces of gin, shake it all up, and strain it over crushed ice into a highball glass. You'll want to add a straw for this one. All right, y'all, we're back. We're gonna taste through these Saturns, see which one we like. We're gonna go in the same order. We're gonna start with Velvet Falernum. Let's dive in. If you don't know about the Saturn, you need to, because this is an awesome drink. So dominant flavors here are passion fruit and almond, like those uh, those syrups really punching through. Lemon juice is the base, but I'm getting quite a lot of lime peel, like kind of those higher lime oil notes from the Velvet Falernum. I need to try something else to compare it to, so let's jump to Lucky. Way different, way more spicy in a really good way. Whereas this is like super mild and round, this has way more going on. It has like more of a true like tiki cocktail feel with like spice notes pushing up, a ton of baking spice character. Also does read just a little bit stronger overall, even in terms of like alcohol content. So that I like a lot. Let's go to California. See if we can get that big ginger note that had on the corn and oil. Oh yeah, that's interesting. More mellow in terms of like overall volume, but ginger punches through in a good way. Much more of like an orangey character going on there. It's good. Doesn't blow me away. Let's try Bitter Truth. This one's kind of bringing back the medicinal notes that I found when I was tasting this neat, but I actually think it kind of works 
well here. This is a very like big tropical fruit cocktail. Yeah, for some reason, and I don't know exactly why, this one feels just like the right mix of like round and mellow, but also still being interesting. If I had to rank these, it's gonna be like totally out of order relative to what we had last time. Dead last for me is the Velvet Falernum. I think it just pretty much disappears and doesn't bring anything to the table. Third place for me, California Falernum. I like it. The ginger hit is there, but it doesn't maybe work perfectly in this like tropical fruit cocktail for me with the gin base. So therefore I think it's third. I'm actually gonna say second is Golden Falernum. It's close though. And I think really just the intense spice kick of the Lucky Falernum in this Saturn cocktail works really well here. I think it's kind of like the angle that this cocktail actually lacks in general. Usually it doesn't have that as much. So I think we've got like totally different landscape of winners, which really just goes to show that Falernum is a very useful and sort of divergent cocktail ingredient depending on which application you're looking at. All right, y'all. It's pretty much a wrap on the Falernum face-off. As you can see, there's a lot of variants out there in the market. These newcomers are quirky, kind of cool, a little more flavorful. You got the OG over here. If you don't have a bottle of Falernum, you definitely need one. Don't skip on it. If you had to buy one, go here. Readily available, cheaper, but we think you need a second. We think you should pick one here. Or you know of one we didn't cover, let us know in the comments below. We'll be sure to grab a bottle and check that out too. Cheers. Thanks for watching. See you next time. All right.